Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? You're listening to K4CO Radio right here. I'm sitting here with Sarah, our vice president. How's it going? Hey, it's good. Oh. I just finished Afternooners with Sarah, and it's so awesome to have an interview right after. Did you have a good Afternooner? I had a wonderful Afternooner. Awesome. It was exactly what I needed for a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's uh, just more work. I absolutely love it. We got a wonderful interview scheduled today. We got two uh, guys. Mr. Eddie Vague, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you guys? I'm doing all right. And Trevor, Trevor Baining, how are you? I am breathing, but I'm good. <laughs> hey, yeah. breathing and vertical. That's <laughs> yeah, always absolutely. good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so thanks for coming in, first of all. Um, you guys came in because you recently released an album. When did this album come out? Yesterday. Oh, my goodness, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Okay, I don't <laughs> think right. I realized that. We're, yeah. we're just on the, the brink of fabulousness. That's yes. awesome. Well, we, we thankfully get the songs a little earlier, so um, we do. it's kind of nice. It is very yeah. nice. Thank I knew, you. I knew there was thing. a reason we started a radio station. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is really cool. I know. Well, you guys had said that you've been really getting ready for this since 2014. So this has been a long time coming, essentially. So I'm curious, with such a wide range of years there, um, what has that been like? Like, were you selecting different songs? Because it's been, you know, nine, ten, well, ten years. Ten years. Yeah, so tell us about the process. It's a tough one. I mean, there was was ups and downs with with our music. We initially started with acoustic music, uh, open mics here and there, and... Like Trevor said earlier, we we have written a lot of songs, um, most in which we have never really recorded. But um, I guess this album in general is a uh, work in progress for about, what, a year, a year and a couple months. Mm-hmm. So everything we've learned before, we used in this in this album to make it a, a full length album. That's awesome. I, love um, it. I know we, we have a couple that we're going to get to. So we'll start off, I think, with our first one. Yeah, let's throw one on right away. Um, let's start with Old Vices. Uh, tell us a little bit about that one. Uh, this was a song that uh, it was it really was uh, significantly different than everything else on the album musically. Um, but uh, it's, it's a song about, uh, I guess if I had to put it into words, I guess it's a song about uh, having a positive relationship, but a relationship that uh, it, it kind of comes and goes. So you kind of go with the flow of things. But um, this was a fun song to make. Like I said, definitely different um, than, than kind of the rest of the songs on the album, just as far as tone and mood and feel. But uh, but it's a really fun song, and uh, I think everybody's going to really like it. And I must say, I really like the line of the chorus, so <laughs> we'll yeah, get into this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back um, with the Restarters. That's Eddie Vag and Trevor Baining. Here is the Restarters with Old Vices on K4CO. <laughs>
Hooked on you like one of my vices. Hooked on you like one of my vices. Hooked on you like one of my vices. I'm hooked on you like one of my old vices. Vices by the Restarters off of a new album that just came out, Where We Belong. I like that song. It's um, We were talking kind of uh, on the break there. It's kind of like a synth rock, which is mm-hmm. cool. And uh, Trevor, you were saying that um, that wasn't even supposed to be a song. Yeah. It was just something that Eddie just threw together, and you're like, um... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he. I mean, he was making you know a ton of music at the time and, and a lot of different projects, and we were trying to, I mean, he was mainly trying to keep things, um, you know, in a similar tone kind of thing. And, and yeah, and then when I heard that, and he's like, oh, I don't really think this is going to be something that's going to work. And it was immediately like, no, this is, this has to happen. We mm-hmm. have to do something with this that is way too unique and well put together not to. So we really ran with that. It was so crazy. did you just kind of take the reins initially on that? Because he didn't know, he's like, yeah, this is just something. And then you just say, no, we'll, I just, we'll do yeah, I, I had a feeling for it. Like I said, I mean, it was, it was definitely, yeah, the palm trees, the jet ski, the, you know, like the whole, <laughs> like I said, the Miami Vice vibe. I mean, yeah. it was just, it just hit me and it was, it was something that was so cool. And I wanted to explore that. And we just started kind of writing some stuff down and getting some ideas on paper just to even see what was possible. And, and really the second that we hit that, that hooked on you like one of my old vices it was like man i it doesn't matter how the rest of this comes out we're gonna give it a run and and it came out yeah way better than we expected did you come up with uh vices from miami Vice? oh yeah <laughs> big time yeah i knew like i said it was in that vein and i was yeah i had to stay there i had to had to keep it in that realm so during the break when we were listening you said it perfectly white button down on a jet ski yeah big time big <laughs> That's time great <laughs> that is awesome. I, I do. That's staying in my my memory. There. Yeah. I really want to see. I want to see you guys actually reenact that. Can you wear a white button oh, down and be on a jet ski? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that yeah. could that be, be like awesome. the, the yeah. next music cover. video. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I like Ooh, yeah. it. I'll be uh, I'll be Tubbs. He'll be Crockett. I mean, we'll get it done. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. <laughs> that is very cool. It's so relatable too. I mean, all of every human being has some form of vice, whatever mm-hmm. it is. So, I mm-hmm. mean, that could be. Yeah, across the board with what the vice is. Right? Yeah, Big that time. repeating hooked on you like one of my vices. That's what that's what catches you. Yeah, right mm-hmm. there. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, new albums where we belong. How long did uh, this album take you guys? Yeah, about a year. About a year. Um, you know, we I I don't think we've have any, had any songs on there that are from like prior projects we were. These are all brand new songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean it just. Here and there, I would get that that idea in my head, and I always go home straight home, and I start working on something, you know, start sampling some things or playing some things, and you know, I always make sure I present that to him. That way, if it is something that we can use, you know, we we both agree to that. Right. But gotcha. Yeah, about a year. And we had so I mean we had you guys in here before, but it was mainly for your music, Eddie and mm-hmm. uh, Trevor. You were along with, and your sound is definitely different. Uh, from you guys decided to get together and go more rock yeah so um really like the collaboration mm-hmm. uh, right here so about a year so you got 13 tracks that's very nice and that's I, around that time that i came last time um is when when you when we decided to focus more on the restarters mm-hmm. and create something that we both contribute to compared to my music which is you know whatever i could think about it's all me basically and then it was featuring the restarters, which was kind of a separate thing at the point. At mm-hmm. that point, mm-hmm. but um, you know, now I'm definitely. It, we're both definitely into the restarters more. Nice. How, how did you guys originally meet? I'm always curious when band members how they meet. It's like, hey, you want to jam? Like, yeah, is it, is it kind of how that goes down? Um, so, so we're brothers technically. Um, you are? Yeah. So I, I was, thought you guys were twins. Yeah, oh my yeah, god! Exactly, yeah. So, okay. Uh, um, no, I was. I was basically adopted. Um, like what, 15 ish years ago now, something years. like that. Um, oh, okay. So, but no, we started oh. making music. Yeah, around 2014. Um, it was just something that we that we just kind of you know got into just because we wanted to. We didn't really have any big goals or anything. 
anything like that as far as what we wanted to do. But, um, you know, I just wanted to write music. He wanted to learn how to play guitar and that sort of stuff. So we, we dabbled there. And then, yeah, over the course of, I don't even know what, four or five, you know, years initially, we, we, I mean, we were just writing songs, making songs. We would go out and we'd play shows with songs that weren't even recorded, that were never released. Um, so like I said, a ton of our music is out there. Uh, you just had to hear it if you were at one of our shows, you know what I mean? And that's, that's really the only way that it, that anybody knew about it. But, um, yeah, like I said, I, and we mentioned this last time too, but I mean, realistically, I think grand total, especially with this new album, I mean, yeah, that puts us probably 50, 60 songs that we made. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Yeah. Okay. And this is your, just your first release, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Restarters first, uh, debut actual, album. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Debut album. Yeah. The, the first project we work oh. on as worked on as the Restarters was more like an EP, okay. but it was like. I had no idea what I was doing as far as producing, <laughs> but we just went along with it. And, and, you know, we had a couple people, you know, comment and, and give us feedback on that first EP. But, um, yeah, this is our first big thing. Mm-hmm. Well, if yeah. you guys have what, 60 <clears throat> songs there in your pocket, I have a feeling another release is going to be <laughs> coming at some point. We're dabbling with the idea of, uh, of actually taking some of those old songs that, you know, some of the, I guess the more, uh, the favorites, you know, that we would play at shows that people would, you know, really enjoyed hearing and some of our favorites. And we're dabbling with the idea of actually going back and kind of, you know, reimagining them and mm-hmm. for, for an official release. So um, that's something we're we're kind of considering. We're batting the idea around. But uh, but I think, yeah, I think that would be pretty fun to do. Nice throwback to uh, to the past, but also kind of keeping things fresh and new. So. Mm-hmm. A very wise musician once told me you never throw anything away. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything. Good, good advice. Yep. Good advice. The only problem is I have songs that I wrote so long ago, I have no idea how they go. Or anything like that. All <laughs> I have is lyrics. Same here, dude. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, so you got a next song here. We're going to play four songs, which is uh, awesome. Um, you, Cut You Out is the name of it great beat but what really caught me was a great bass and guitar lead um in that who's playing that guitar well i it was technically me but yeah uh, <laughs> what does that mean i know Tech technically, was technically me, me. Yeah. we don't want to give too much know. credit yeah. to the musicians but <laughs> yeah it was definitely my my idea with this song um in through my perspective it was definitely a reflective song as well mm-hmm. um cutting out all those uh you know vices yeah (laughs) cutting out all the bad things you know to put it simply and um not only cutting them out but learning from them so well that's the biggest thing right there Mm -hmm. exactly all right well let's listen to this guy cut you out and this is the restarters album just dropped yesterday album's called where we belong we will be right back with eddie and trevor
What a beautiful song. Thank you all for tuning in. If you are just tuning in right now, we are joined with a very exclusive K4CO radio interview with Eddie Vague and Trevor Baining with the Restarters. And we just played Cut You Out. That is so beautiful. Man, Thank those you. lyrics. I learn new vocabulary every time I listen to your songs. Really? Um, I do. I had no idea. So we were commenting um, off air for those of you that don't know Obsidian. Go listen to Obsidian right now. It reminded me a lot of Cut You Out. And I never knew what Obsidian meant. So I love playing that song when I'm DJing. I'm like, you're going to get a little history lesson right now. Yeah. <laughs> and know that, yeah, I am your Obsidian. So um, tell me about Cut You Out. I'm kind of curious with the lyrics of that and how that formed. <laughs> yeah, so Cut You Out, <clears throat> um, in in my perspective, I see it as basically grabbing everything that that is negative in you or you know everything that's happened to you and just basically cutting out cutting it out of your life but also learning from those mistakes and those those events and uh you know trying it's basically talking to yourself to cut it out just, just move on you <laughs> just know cut it out, man. <laughs> just move on and and it, it, there's a part on that song where it does get a bit aggressive and that was my way of saying I'm I'm doing it and I'm gonna do it. Basically, pushing myself to uh, remove all of that and move on. You know, I do love that uh, bridge towards the end with the ba- the bass and the guitar. It just that, that's an awesome groove. It is. Right it d- did that come first or lyrics? That came first. Really? It yeah. Did. So okay. Um, <clears throat> originally, like we were talking earlier, the, I present these things to tr- with Trevor or to Trevor when I make when I start composing them, right? And there are certain parts that come first and we just kind of connect the dots after that but uh, i remember that was one of the key moments of that song where we decided this is going to be our style to the to our music this is going to be the restarter style so definitely a rock and roll vibe slash you know singer mel- I th- melodic uh, I you think, know i think it could be described as yeah it's definitely the 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 tone of the album the tone of the band is definitely that deep rooted rock vibe that that we know well, that that we think represents us well um, as a duo and individually, but also still having that kind of that reflective and that introspective um, songwriting style as well. Um, that kind of that, that we make mesh together. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's ultimately kind of what it boils down to. I don't think there's there's not a song that we've that we have ever made, nor will we ever make that that doesn't have substance uh, from both from both sides, uh, whether it be the lyrics or the music. Um, that's really something that's important to us in everything we do um, is making sure that there is a story to tell there, that it is consistent, that that there's something that can be connected to. We don't like empty space and we don't like things that aren't going to resonate um, mm-hmm. in the way that we want them to. Gotcha. Got it. It's really the sound is full. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of it. Exactly. Um, we touched it on it uh, a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, on uh uh, Facebook, it says since 2014. Um, before, so this is your first album, but before I kind of asked you about that and you said, well, before we were just kind of doing acoustic stuff, kind of writing stuff, playing around. And then well, real, only recently, a little over a year ago, that's when you guys were just like, no, we're doing this. And you decided to go to the rock phase. Mm-hmm. How did that come about? Um, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was really Eddie could, could kind of you know speak to that a little more. I have always been a, uh, you know, pulled in the dire- direction of, of rock music. You know, I've always wanted to make like metal or like screams and, you know, like h- harder things because that's just what grabs my attention. And it's interesting because a lot of your solo stuff is not. It, exactly. You know, and yeah. and that, that's the weird part because, you know, when it comes to, to my personal music, I mean, um, I just sing what i it comes to mind you know Mm -hmm. but with this album and when we decided to restart the restarters um it gave us more time and experience to to throw it all in this you know Mm -hmm. the the rock thing is definitely my go-to because it shows more expression more more feelings in your in the writing you know Mm mm-hmm Gotcha. I actually heard both of that with Cut You Out. It's really cool. It actually, 
So when I think of cut you out, I think of going on a journey, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it's the whole process. So I think of maybe a a breakup or something like traumatic and kind of going through all of those different stages of being really quiet and then emotionally sad. And then you have the anger part of it. And then you finally have the relief Mm -hmm. and you can do that. I mean, it was four minutes and I'm like, I actually went through all of those stages with you through that song, which is really cool. And it shows how talented you both are that you can be that versatile. I mean, the, the songwriter, the acoustic, kind of the more mellow, the, and the lyric vocabulary has always astounded me. And then the rock. I mean, that's that's impressive to me. I mean, I, I have no talent when it comes to music. <laughs> I cannot sing. I can't do anything. But I think that's but, the best criti- criticism but, is when you, when not to say it in a bad way, but when you don't know music as much as artists do, um, that is your genuine, genuine emotion. That's your genuine thought. Yeah, and compared to somebody who does listen to the music and like, oh, I know, I know that, or I know this, you know what I mean? Right. But you, what you felt or what you thought was uh, a true feeling. Well, what once you become a musician, you're all snobby. Yeah. <laughs> there, trust me, there are things that I I'm, there are things that I listen to on this album, and I'm like, Trevor, I can't do this, man. I, I don't know if this is right. And he goes, Dude, stop overthink. You're overthinking again. Exactly. So, Almost so. every musician does. It's so a better sweet thing. It, it mm-hmm. is. It's always, and we all are. We're our hardest on ourselves, and we're so critical. And but what's really cool, I like the rawness what comes out. That's why I love this interview portion. It's like it's your own personal mm-hmm. journey, right. and it's perfect exactly how it's supposed to be on the album Mm -hmm. and don't change anything if you can because it's it's so hard we always look you know the rear view mirror and go ah well i should have could have woulda it's just like put it out there and have people experience it i'm usually that guy that wants like constant change but you know and what you just said is that we we go so well together as a as a group right as the restarters because there are times when i do want certain changes and then trevor's like no dude i think that sounds don't don't make it scripted don't don't you know block it all together like that Mm -hmm. just let it come naturally and then you know we come up with things like this for sure so i i abide by that 100 percent. that's amazing and speaking of constant change actually one thing i noticed uh just with the handful of songs that i've listened to on this album already is you guys gotta use a lot utilize a lot of build-ups Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, you go from slow to building it up to rock. I mean, not on that last song, when that bass and that guitar kick in, that lead. I mean, that's kind of like the the real rock part of it. Right. And um, tell us, I mean, I love build-ups, personally. So uh, who's who's kind of like the guy behind it? Who loves the build-ups that's, out there? I mean, Eddie's definitely the build-up guy. Because, like I said, we'll start with, uh, I mean, build-ups is definitely what he enjoys making, and it's fun. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I know... That every single time that he says, "Okay, I got a project, and and I want you to listen to it, and you know this is going to be a restarter song," I can feel it. I already know there's at least one in that song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. So yep. it's something that we can that you can definitely expect. <clears throat> I mean, it, it's it's very very apparent on the album too. Um, there's a lot of that influence, but it's kind of it's cool too because it works um, it works towards the lyrics as well. It's fun to write around around that style mm-hmm. um, because it it does it kind of builds up builds. Up what you're talking about too you know it gives you that edge like you're pushing the story you're pushing the story story up um and i enjoy that like i said that's that's one of the biggest things i like writing too is is having that um it's not just like a like a flat linear storytelling process it's there's there's highs there's lows there's build-ups there's drops and the storytelling kind of flows with that and and i i love that so anytime that he's making something i'm just i know that it's going to be not not even necessarily a challenge it's going to be a fun journey to get to you know to get to the end of of even just putting that song together not even necessarily what the song is about i feel like i feel like i would be doing something wrong if there if it was all constant you know true yeah sound yeah that's why i always make sure with a restarter song to you know like sarah said earlier you know all the different feelings and and uh parts of that journey of of the story um it wouldn't be that if we didn't have, you know, uh, soft parts or crazy parts at the end, or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like a regular story, like a movie, like a novel. Yeah. It's it's a roller coaster. Yeah, right? we, up there with different I, I would call it like the climax is the breakdown. You know, that's right. that's the climax of the story. Mm-hmm. So. Exactly. No, I I thought it. I really like that. I'm a big build up guy. So um, you had a lot of that in this album. So um, thirteen tracks on it. I mean. 
Do you guys have a favorite? Should I even ask you that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> should yeah, should we, like, fun. one cover your ears and the other one say? You know, <laughs> I, uh, we've talked about this. We've mm-hmm. talked about this. Um, like, what would be your single? And, Eddie, what would be your single on this? You can go first. Oh, oh man, go. that's so tough. Uh, we're going to play one of them is, is, is actually one of the songs you're going to play today. Perfect. All right. Um, so, yeah, that song is called This Is A Trap. That one was so much fun to make. I think, hey, in my opinion, that was the most fun song that we've, you know, actually making that song was the most fun on this album. Um, mm-hmm. So I would probably say This Is A Trap. Close second, um, there's a song on the album called Catatonic that is... Very underrated. Mu- yeah, very underrated. But musically amazing it was uh, again very fun to make um you know raw loud fast i talked last time i mean i'm a punk at heart so that one <laughs> yeah it does my, get, it does get off my bread vibes, and butter yeah. for sure but yeah i would say those two are mine nice yeah definitely my my favorite was catatonic and and not only because I wasn't in it, but <laughs> <laughs> you got to go home no, and sleep. And not I, do the I work. was in it you, I just at the very end, you know. But um, I thought it was great because, like I said earlier, it it, it is a very underrated song even to us mm-hmm. because we built that song and it was like e- the whole musical aspect to that song is is amazing. And then the, the you know the whole punk vibe from his vocals. Um, he even does the the uh, like reminder, you know that <laughs> punk that that punk vibe, you know, and and um, yeah, just that song's it's heavy, but it's also melodic and emotional. So mm. I'd have to say that one's my favorite. See, I'm telling you, Obsidian Catatonic. I mean, <laughs> my God, I, I <laughs> counteract the weight. Like I, I remember that one from the last. That's interview. true. Yeah, yeah. 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 that one's on this album. It's as on well, this. Yeah. yeah, and that was actually the song that really kind of kickstarted <laughs> us. You know, wanting to to mess around and kind of start a new project too. You know, it was because we had fun making that song, and it was it was a different vibe than anything like I said that we had done before as the restarters, and and it was just kind of like, okay, well, let's see if we can do something else. And it was funny because we did counteract the weight. Then we started kind of messing around with some other stuff and Cut You Out was the second song that we kind of made. And we were like, okay, now we have a foundation. Let's actually do this. Let's, mm-hmm. let's go yeah. on it. Let's keep going. That was our uh, trans- or, uh, what's it called? Tra- not transfer. Uh, I don't know. That don't transition. Know that's our, that was our <laughs> transition <laughs> into the Restarters yeah, project. Basically. Nice. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, you got you got another song, and we were talking about buildups. This song, I definitely noticed um, the buildups in Leave You Behind. Um, this one definitely stuck out. Who wants to tell me about this? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I love the smile. I you do give. love the smile. Right. It's this little devious, like, yeah. <laughs> you what are other, you hiding? Like, I mean, mm. I'm definitely noticing a theme with the songs here. <laughs> this song. Old Vice is cutting you out, leave you behind. Yeah. I'm like, so tell us the devious smile. About leave you this behind, song. man. It is. It's funny because it's a whole change of of. Uh, subject here because it, it is a a upbeat song but it's a sad song and like i said earlier it's reflective of you know when i was young and i thought there was a certain way to do love you know and uh i always seem to uh, mess things up even even when i thought i was doing something right you know so leave you behind was one of those things where we were just in the wrong time you know at the wrong time and and uh you know, it, even though it was a positive change, uh, a positive thing, uh, you know, leaving it all behind. But even now, um, I would still go back to those moments and uh, relive all that again. So nice. Wow. it is Deep. it is it is about it is about uh, a person if you want to relate it to a person. Um, but that was just my my basic idea of this song. Is it about a person to you? Um, I don't know. Okay, so I don't think I'm allowed to, to say, but you're not yeah. allowed to say. All right, fair <laughs> enough. All right, well, this next song is "Leave You Behind." We are speaking with the Restarters, Eddie Vague and Trevor Banning. The new album is called "Where We Belong." Definitely check it out on all streaming um, media platforms. And just came out yesterday. We will be right back. Here is "Leave You Behind." <laughs>
Good afternoon. Welcome back. Thank you all for tuning in to a special interview on K4CO Radio. We have Eddie and Trevor here with us from the Restarters. They just dropped their album yesterday. And uh, that was a really cool song. I really, that one's probably my favorite so far, Leave You Behind, because it's, man, that is versatile. I mean, I can think about everything about leaving something behind, whether it be someone or something. Um, but I build up, bringing it down. The build up up. is really amazing. And you talked about your vibrato earlier and that's really, I can hear it from both of you. Yeah. You guys are outstanding by yourselves and together, which is pretty freaking amazing. Thank you. Um, I love what you said before. It's, I do this a lot in my life where you think something is uh, hard Mm -hmm. and maybe sometimes I'm using my own words here, very traumatic experience. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh no, I'm not going to go into detail (laughs) at all. Um, no, just about relationships that, you know, you have, we have them and they don't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be a family or a friendship. And you think, Jesus, that, that sucked. That was horrible. <laughs> and then I get some distance and I'm like, you know what? Joshua laughs. <laughs> uh, I've known him for 21 years. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so you could, but you can look back and be like, I'm the person I am today. And it's always these moments of sometimes that are a little bit darker in our days that make us grow. Mm-hmm. I love those uncomfortable moments, and then you become this whole new person. And I love that you can reflect back on that and be where you are today. Big mm-hmm. time. And, and I'm I, grateful. I love that. You know, I'm great. I'm grateful. I'm sure it, most people um, are grateful with how their future kind of turned out after those events. You know, I think every, everybody get <laughs> eventually gets to that point where mm-hmm. they're grateful. It's just mm-hmm. how long will it take? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and for me, you know, I'm, I at this point after I wrote this song and all that, I, I almost felt closure from it, you know? And, right. you know, I, I even mentioned the word in the song that it's been a long time since, you know, this event or, or whatever, or when I was young, <clears throat> but, um, definitely feel like I, I just let it go. You know, mm-hmm. I left it behind. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so. I do that too with my first loves. Again, it doesn't have to be a person. It's like things that I was really attached to. Mm-hmm. But like my first love was I was 16 years old. And man, like I think about that all the time because mm-hmm. it's like that first very impactful moment. And it kind of shapes, I don't know, am I allowed to talk about this? It's <laughs> sure. therapy for sure. me. I need to revisit my 16 year old self. <laughs> um, but no, it's amazing, you know, the journeys that we go on with all of our relationships. Mm-hmm. It's very cool how you can do that in four minutes. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, especially with, with <laughs> how did we do that? You know, like we're yeah. very aggressive and we like to scream and all that stuff. And, you know, it's awesome to hear such a, a beautiful song come out of, you know, us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it is very cool, and it's not just screaming. There's, I don't hear actually really any screaming. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Like I said, we were, you know, this album was fun because we 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 kind of brought uh, we we got to play around a little bit with how we sound and and you know and the tones that we wanted to go with and and that was one of the things that was also really fun about making these songs too on this album was was actually finding those tones. Mm-hmm. Um, so many of these songs. I mean, we would sit down for for actual lyric writing processes, and it was it was multiple multiple attempts at how do we want to sound? You know, what are we actually trying to convey here? Um, and that was that was something that we hadn't really done before. A lot of the times, I think it kind of it felt like it came more natural. So it was like a one or two take kind of thing, and then we'd be like, okay, we got it. But this one, there was so much reflection on this album. Um, nothing was done quickly. Nothing was done kind of prematurely. Everything was very thought out. And if it didn't sound right, if it was even off by, by the slightest amount, it was like, okay, no, let's stop. We need to go back to the drawing board. Let's make it perfect. Yeah. Um, so that was really fun to and do vocally. This, this was, I believe the first song that Trevor, uh, did a long note. Cause you, he's usually, you know, straight to the point with, when he sings, but you know, on this song, I remember there was a moment on that breakdown, um, I swear if I can change it, then I would now. Mm-hmm. That note, I was like, dude, can you try Can you try to do it a little bit longer? And he goes, he tried it like four times, and then finally we got it, and I was like, dude, that is the first time that I've ever heard you do such a long <laughs> note. And it, it's awesome. It's one of the best, you know, lines in the in the song. So... And as, a, as opposed to a, a lot of uh, music out there, what's kind of nice is you guys even bring the vocals down a little bit mm-hmm. as a part of of the overall song instead of on a lot of music out there today, especially today, the vocals are just way out front. Right. You know, so you guys bring it down and kind of mesh it all very well together. Uh, we talked a lot about the music side of it. Now, um, you know, Eddie, you're usually 
doing your own stuff, your solo stuff, and this is your first album uh, with you guys both together. How did the lyric writing kind of go out with you guys? Because um, I know Trevor, you you guys collaborated a lot with the lyrics mm-hmm. on right. this album, right? So. Yeah. So on this album, I definitely learned <clears throat> how to write better because you know I've I've always been the one to work on just the music and you know just hand it off to somebody or you know, but. Um, yeah, definitely when it came to writing a story to, to a song, mm-hmm. I, I learned a lot from this album. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think too it was um it was not not even so much pushing our own boundaries as far as kind of what we wanted to talk about and what we wanted to say. Um it was also kind of interesting too because <clears throat> believe it or not a lot of these songs were not written when we were like together in the same room writing you know what i mean and that was kind of cool so uh the, a different kind of spin on that perspective was as eddie would kind of make this music and make the projects and stuff like that um you know he would kind of get an idea in his head so he was he was recording a lot of the lyrics writing a lot of his own stuff he would he would, you know, on a lot of these songs especially leave you behind um he had kind of written his parts recorded his parts and then sent it and said, what do you think? Use it. Go with it. You and know here what I mean? and there, Figure it out. Here and there, you know, some words were off or, you know, certain lines. But um, it all came along with, you know, back and forth stuff with, mm-hmm. with Trevor. And he'd be like, well, I don't know if that sounds right. I don't know if this sounds right, whatever. So I would write more, write better, and try to be better at writing, you know. Mm-hmm. So. So you guys basically on all of these songs, I mean, it's both of your guys is writing these lyrics. Oh, yeah. It's not one of you wrote this one, one of you wrote the lyrics to this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. Even though, like he said, it's back and forth. I send him things or he, you know, even though it's like that, that criticism or that, uh, you know, those ideas are are used, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we always got to come down to a mutual agreement. Right. If if we haven't, then we would be on two different spectrums. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it was fun because like I said, it it's definitely um, yeah, it was definitely a joint venture um, on you know everything lyrically, and it was fun too just to just to kind of see how our own minds worked, but see the similar paths that we would kind of go down, um, and then obviously play with it from there to make it you know to make it one constant theme per you know for the songs. So um, but yeah, that was definitely definitely a fun time just to kind of see see the uh, the development process. Um, speaking on Leave You Behind, I do have a little a little teaser about this song. Um, it was so important to us that we are currently working on a alternate version of it with a <clears throat> with a very good guitarist. He's a he's a friend of ours. Um, kind of playing through the whole song and actually making it sound more more effective than what it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's and gonna, it sounds great. Yeah, I'll tell you that definitely right. give it a more organic kind of feel mm-hmm. too. Um so yeah, it'll be it'll be a fun little um, you know, I, I guess a little release. Remix. Yeah, it's exactly. going to be a single, yeah. you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're just we're just waiting for editing and stuff like that. So. Right. That's very cool. I love how much you guys collaborate. You can tell how much just in even sitting here, like you guys are bouncing each other's you know ideas off each other. It's very cool. Because that, sometimes I don't know what to say. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. I never do. I just shoot from the hip most well, I mean, of the day. You guys are but... brothers. You've known each other long yeah. enough. You know each other. True. So yeah. and I, I have very impulsive thoughts, so I don't. I, I got to control my mouth sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Well, I'm excited for this last one, too. Um, this is a trap. And Trevor, this is your favorite. Oh, yeah. So do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? This one was, like I said, it was the most fun song to make. Um, so same thing. Eddie had, had made the music. The music was already great. Um, but it was, uh, it was this one stumped me at first because, you know, I, I kind of had an idea of, of how I wanted the lyrics to sound and that sort of thing. Um, but I, I couldn't pinpoint it. And I was kind of struggling with it. And then Eddie kind of took, took the reins and he recorded a verse <clears throat> and I was, and that's all I needed. Like he, he just kind of gave me that, that, that paved road, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, uh, like I said, we, you know, I, I, I kind of, I wrote everything, uh, from on my parts and that sort of thing that the first verse and kind of gave the, the song, the, I guess the idea of what it became, but it was so fun because normally, you know, we, yeah, we do have our back and forth and stuff like that, but this song, we really went heavy on backing each other up on these parts and actually giving it more of like yeah, that was fun awesome. and raw and organic sound. And it was just, uh, it was just a blast to make it. It was one, one of those songs where we're done and we're like, 
Hugs, that was fucking... Or that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Impulsive thoughts, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was... It, this one was just... Yeah, it was so much fun to do, and we had a blast with it, and it was... Yeah, I mean, when we, when we finished it, um, and we were listening back to it, I mean, we were just... We, we were both kind of just going nuts, because it's just such a fun hype, you know, just... It gets you going. High octane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely a Definitely. fight song, or a call you out as a red flag song. Yeah, sure. big time, Ooh. big mm-hmm. time. All right. Well, let's get to it. That, it's a trap. It is a trap. Well, yeah, this is a trap. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, we are with Eddie and Trevor with the Restarters, and we're going to play their fourth song here called This Is a Trap. You know, the album is called Where We Belong. It is available as of yesterday, so check it out. We will be right back. This is a trap. 
That was the Restarters, Colorado Zone. The new album is called Where We Belong. Just came out yesterday. You guys got 13 wonderful tracks on this guy. I uh, love it. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, Thank you for, yeah, having, us for awesome. having us back. This was fun. Yeah, I, re- I really love what I'm hearing. And, um, yeah, it's just it's it's really cool because I, I know you, Eddie. I know your solo stuff. And then hearing this with Trevor coming on in and the the interactions that you guys do and the collaborations is just it's a pleasure. It's a whole different book, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like this as a trap. For those of you that were, <laughs> you couldn't hear us, we were talking about mice, mice traps i was actually thinking big game yeah i was like running solo through a forest trying to not get caught in like these huge bear traps oh and i, I like also, that better I, yeah. I, I was like and you guys are talking about Stuart little I don't <laughs> understand. Like, yeah, big, that... bigger it was it was almost like a video game i could see it in the back of like a movie like a john wick almost type, the of, barbarian, type of thing yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, i was like cool. hey, like we'll don't it. f with me man <laughs> like i am huge and coming to Take it by storm. I like it. I'm, not, I'm still on the Star Wars. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what music does. This is what I love about it. We all have different visions and imagery. Speaking of, before we sign off, I wanted to know about the album cover, I believe. So you have a lot of beautiful roses oh, yeah. and then death with a skeleton. So <laughs> is the, that's yes, not the album no? cover. No, that no, is, that's yeah, our. That's that not the just, skeleton. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a Facebook. Um, that's our logo. That's yeah, that's our business it, card. Yeah. yeah. Where is we? Re- oh, yeah. it went away. Oh, the trees. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. Well, exactly, I want to know so. about both. I want to know about the skeleton and the. Oh, that's peaceful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. See, that's better. <laughs> but both are are very much of a story. Well, so, yeah. I don't. I think the skeleton thing that was just more of just something that you know we wanted a visual because at the time like we were you know we needed something um for you know cards or just any sort of promotional you stuff, social media type, posts, yeah. whatever the case yeah mm-hmm. um, <laughs> something to say i uh, thank you and i'm thinking of you <laughs> as here. a skeleton <laughs> right <laughs> um but no so that i mean that was just kind of more so um like i said just a visual for for some of the marketing stuff that we were trying to do and and kind of build up to the album release and that sort of thing um the album cover that photo i actually took myself um so yeah so that's an original photo by me that is the coal creek canyon um drive uh in the middle of winter and uh but yeah i've just you know i that's like my favorite one of my favorite drives in the state um and i i take it regularly and i I don't know we were just kind of going through um going through photos and we were trying to figure out kind of what we wanted it to be um and we weren't really too picky but we wanted something that did that did resonate with us um and yeah, I mean, there's just something about, um, you know, we're, we're both very much so the kind of people like we take drives to kind of clear our head and, and just to get away for a little while, if we need to decompress or escape or whatever the case may be. And, and, uh, and that picture just really reflected that and it reflected well with, with what we decided to name the album, where we belong and that sort of stuff. And it was just, it was kind of a no brainer. It's, uh, to find where we belong. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Wow. It's See, the open deep. road. Wherever it's so wherever deep. you want to go. I love it. Hashtag deep. Hashtag deep. <laughs> that's like no, that's like me driving is is like meditation to me. Oh, that's yeah. why I always just have the music on and I don't see how people can get so angry on the roads. I mean I do. You're right. I do with yeah. other people, but for the most part, I'm just kind of cruising, listening to music. In your own world. In my own world. Yeah, yeah exactly. No. So No, I do get angry, <laughs> yes, yeah. of course, but <laughs> You know, that's like 5% of the time. You can't you live in Denver go, and not have road rage. I agree. Exactly. Go find that place. Like the album cover is where you need, where you belong. <laughs> you need, some, you need some zen. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you guys so much yeah. for coming on. Thank in. you guys. Thank Absolutely. You guys, yeah, love for having it. Us. Check out the album, Where We Belong. It is on all streaming services. Denver's own The Restarters. Nice rock, uh, rock album. I must, I'd love it. I do too. And you're gonna yeah. hear, uh, you're gonna hear it on K4CO radio, of course. So. I know. I hope we have. Do we have all of them that are sent over? Most. I can send you. I can send you the entire album if you want. Cool. Well, we have to have Catatonic now because yeah. that is both That's of your true. favorites. It's if you haven't point. sent that, there's a, there's so we a, need to hear that too. These four songs that we played for you guys, they're definitely the ones that are more catchy and like are. I don't want to say are. Um, chosen favorites you know <laughs> but they're uh, along with all the other songs those other songs are all of them are as equally amazing yeah. and i'm saying that you know, <laughs> my, my own critic you know and um there's also a bonus track called somehow that i wrote and it's definitely an eddie vague song um 
well, it's a restarter song, but Eddie Vague wrote it. So gotcha. that one is is uh, that style where it's like, oh, I, thank you for being in my life. I love you, and it, you know, stuff like that. So. <laughs> you say that all that yeah, so you say, yeah, sarcastically. Exactly. Yeah. You say that next time. It just I comes love to someone. mind sometimes. Like I this. love you. I'm so glad I have you in my life. You know, you're I told there. you about my music. My music is always like, you know, straight out of the head. So like that song, yeah, I can relate to it, but it's. This is why people write songs about breakups. Right. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it would sound like that. I love you. You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a orchestra in that song as well. Ooh, Ooh. very nice. Oh, that's awesome. That, that one's definitely a, a good song, uh, along with all the other songs. You know, Dead Inside is the first song on the album, and that one is one of our, my favorites as well. Just a real good starter yeah, for very, you. Yeah, very, very uh, four on the floor action. You Catch know. people right away. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. And Love people it. can find this anywhere, right? Anywhere. Everywhere on so Spotify, Apple Music, et yeah. Amazon, Pandora, mm-hmm. uh, SoundCloud, uh, yeah. you know, anywhere. Anywhere awesome. you need it. Cool. Mm-hmm. And they can follow you on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Instagram. restarters and Instagram. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. You're all over the place. I, I think you need to update um, the restarters page, though. On you Instagram? Say, or, no, on Facebook. Uh, acoustic alternative band. You need to add oh, like yeah. a True. whole bunch of different genres on there. Yeah, yeah. there's there. We you know we missed some steps, but we were just so excited for release. <laughs> that, we just uh, want to get it out. Yeah, exactly. Throw yeah, a skeleton in some yeah, trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We got to change it. it to death metal. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're just going to change our entire uh, yeah. name and yeah. we'll the, be called Pig Vomit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. The restarters are no more. Thanks for listening. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We restarted. Yeah. All right. Well, the restarters, definitely check it out. Album's Where We Belong. Eddie Vague, Trevor Benning, again, thank you very much for coming in. Of course. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Get you back to the regular uh, scheduled program.